Welcome to Tumbled Wells Baptist Church Online. It's good to be together again, wherever you're watching from. Now, we haven't got Duncan with us today because we have got a guest speaker. We have him, Pastor Kefas Amos, and we'll be bringing the message to us later on. We're really looking forward to hearing from you, Kefas. And um, Pastor Kefas is from the Church of Christ in the Nations, and he's based in Hayes in London. So we really look forward to that later on. But I do have Nicola. It's really good to see you, Nicola. Welcome. Lovely to be here. Yeah. Now, we're so used to you sitting over there by the Clavenova, so it's great for you to be sitting in the chair. And we'll be chatting together a bit later on. So today is Sunday. Some of, some of us refer to it as the Sabbath rest. So a day when we take a break from what we do the rest of the week. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 says this. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So keeping it holy means like setting it apart. Now I came across a great quote by a chap called Wayne Muller. And he said this, Sabbath time assumes that if we step back and rest, we will see the wholeness in it all. We will naturally apprehend the good in how things are taste the underlying strength, beauty, and wisdom that, li that lives even in the difficult days. Take delight in the gift and the blessing of being alive. Now there's so much in there, I kind of think I would probably need a week at least to go through each statement and work out what that means. But today, let's take a step back and rest. Rest in the presence of Almighty God, who's with us wherever we are. And to see and taste the good, even in the difficult days, and take delight in today and the blessing of being part of God's family. So Nicola, are there any parts of the Sabbath or kind of Sunday that you do differently? I always listen to Christian radio. So all these people that have Spotify and iPads and <laughs> yeah, tunes, yeah. I, I'm not one of those. I like the liveness mm -hmm. and the, the now of the radio. But on Sunday, I change station and start mm -hmm. my morning in bed with my cup of tea and breakfast, listening to Hearts and Hymns with Pam Rhodes. Okay. And I love the traditional hymns and also choruses from a generation or a time that perhaps we wouldn't sing now, but bring mm -hmm. a smile. Mm -hmm. I have stuck with church online at half past ten. Yeah, uh, that's the rhythm, and, and that's what I enjoy. Yeah. Um, and there are times, depending what songs of praise was, I always record it. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that has caught my interest, I watch it in the evening. Okay. Um, if I don't watch it in the evening, then it's not a program I watch. I always feel wrong on a different day. Uh -huh. It's a Sunday thing. It's a Sunday thing. Very good. Mm -hmm. I try hard not to do any schoolwork. I have a good job share we hand over on a Friday mm -hmm. and usually I'm well organised so I can let that be and have a day mm -hmm. just quiet and still. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do any particular dinners. Um, I think church is often busy being here in yeah. the normal rhythm but that time to just have a slower pace is definitely part of Sabbath. Yeah, that's really good. It's important, isn't it? Mm. So. I mean, so much of what we have kind of like around the UK, Sundays don't seem any different, do they? And particularly now that we're in lockdown when pretty much every day <laughs> seems to be the same in some respects. I think it's really good that we can be a part of church online. And like you're saying, you're there every Sunday, half past 10, as many of us are. And you are now because you're watching. Um, it's important to help us keep our perspective on God, to look up, to worship him, to learn from him and to, to meet from, with him because it kind of sets us up for the week. Definitely. Obviously not forgetting that God is not just for Sundays. He is for every day. So thank you for sharing those thoughts. It's really helpful. Now, Pete Gregg wrote a Sabbath blessing, and I'd like to start our time together with a blessing. Now, you might think, aren't you supposed to put a blessing at the end of this time together, Rachel? Well, yes, I'm going to do it at the end as well. But as we pray this, I want you to pray this prayer for yourself as we start our time together. So let's pray. May this day bring Sabbath rest to my heart and my home. 
May God's image in me be restored and my imagination in God be restoried. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May I know grace to embrace my own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. And may God's word feed me and his spirit lead me into this day, this week, and into the life to come. Amen. I'm now gonna hand over to Jack and the team who are going to lead us in our time of sun worship. Let's give our praise and adoration to our great and good God. When I see the beauty of a sunset's glory Amazing artistry across the evening sky When I feel the mystery of a distant galaxy It awes and humbles me to be loved by a God so high What can I do but thank you What can I do but give my life to you Hallelujah Hallelujah What can I do but praise you Every day make everything I do Hallelujah story of a God of mercy who shared humanity and suffered by our side of the cross they nailed you to that could not hold you now you're making all things new by the power of your risen life what could I do but thank you? What could I do but give my life to you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. What could I do but praise you? Every day make everything I do. Hallelujah. could I do but thank you what could I do but give my life to you hallelujah hallelujah what could I do but praise you every day make everything I do hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. We bow our hearts, we lift our hands, we turn our eyes to you again. And we surrender to the truth That all we need is found in you Receive our adoration Jesus, Lamb of God 
Receive our adoration. How wonderful you are. We choose to leave it all behind and turn our eyes towards the prize. The upward call of God in Christ. You have our hearts, Lord, take our lives. Receive our adoration, Jesus, Lamb of God. Receive our standing now lifting up your name we're joining with the angel song we're gathered to your ancient throne children in our fire Receive our adoration, how wonderful you are. So thank you, Jack and the team. It's really great to be free to worship together in this way. So Nicola, it's really good to see you. And let me start by saying, on kind of behalf of all of us, we do really appreciate you playing the keys every Thursday because I realise it must be a really big commitment. So it's really fabulous to see you every week and to be a part of that. It's really great. So thank you. I think it's a privilege. I love worship and music and the fact that I'm one of the few people allowed to come into church <laughs> every week and yeah. worship, even when it was downstairs in the crash room, is really special being part of those singing praises mm -hmm. in God's house mm -hmm. with his people each week makes me smile. Yeah, that's really lovely. It does look like really special when we're part of that and just you all together there. It's, it's great. Yeah, so thank you. So I thought it'd be really good to kind of just find out how, you, how you're doing. You're a primary school teacher. So kind of what, how's it been like for you the last uh, six weeks or so being back in lockdown once again? Where I teach, we divided into two teams. Mm -hmm. So each year group has a team responsible for children at home mm -hmm. and they had to quickly get the hang of technology. Mm -hmm. And I'm part of the team that have the other half or the few children of the year in school, yep. socially distanced, regular washing of hands in a, in a bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my top thought is it's cold. We have to have windows open yeah. um, to keep the air flowing freely. So it's cold and it's a little bit isolating. Schools have a wonderful buzz normally. Yeah. There's people everywhere and any learning comes with joy. And even those tricky moments, we know it's okay because we can practice. Yeah. But at the moment, it's quiet. Mm. And that's really strange. Um, the plus is, I've got to know the group I have very well. How many have you got 
I mean, I suppose it varies from day to day, but... Yes, I have the most of 10. Okay. Um, and it goes down to about six. Right. Um, so the children come on days, parents are mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. um, and they were a mixture of the two classes. And mm -hmm. I have a teaching assistant with me because although there's so few in the event of needing another pair of hands, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's not many available nearby. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and to sort of cover lunches and mm -hmm. playtimes. We've been able to focus on what the children are learning and their next mm -hmm. steps. We've enjoyed a slightly slower pace. The yeah. curriculum is jam-packed normally and we want to fit everything in. That's nice in a way. So this is a little slower. And with COVID, there's snack time and hand washing has to happen, sort of yeah. not just off you go to play. We want to be sure how mm -hmm. hands are washed. Mm -hmm. um, and what we learn at school has to reflect the children at home. Mm -hmm. And that's trickier. Often if we think, oh, we need a bit more practice, there's <laughs> tomorrow. And at the moment, what we do today mm -hmm. is today, but it has to flow with tomorrow because we have to match the children at home. Yeah. So it's different, but I have loved getting to know these children. They mm. have settled well. Um, That's great. And I think the children in school are incredibly fortunate. Mm. At home, parents are juggling working, mm -hmm. parenting, trying to educate. Mm. Um, and I think that's really hard. Yeah, I have absolutely. children in a year group I'm familiar with, with every resource in school available should I need it. Mm. Um, and time, time to get to know them time to chat, mm -hmm. time to learn. Um, so that, that's been lovely. I think I was reminded that COVID is still there. It was in one of the local preschools. Okay. So although it's really encouraging that things mm -hmm. are moving on, mm -hmm. I'm reminded of why we're being cautious yep. and why it is as we are, it is at the moment. So that has affected your bubble then, presumably, because that affected that one child? Yes. Fortunately, mum mm -hmm. is isolating in case it wasn't okay. mum with COVID, mm -hmm. but that needs to be cautious. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we're missing one this week. Oh, oh. That's really interesting to hear. And, and how are the children at home coping, do you, do you find? I think they are struggling. I think they try their best, mm -hmm. but that keeping going. And as teachers, we're constantly adapting. Oh, it's a bit tricky. Why don't we do it like this? Mm -hmm. Or you've done a really good job and you've tried your hardest. You might have only done three questions, but that's, that's, that's really good. You have yeah. absolutely nailed what you can do today. Mm -hmm. And we know we're all different. Whereas at home, you get a lesson and parents aren't sure how much to do. Yeah. Um, and I think there are some children who have really struggled. They're, mm -hmm. they're missing school school mm. is sociable school oh, has yeah. fun Absolutely. Um, and that sense of you are home all day <laughs> every day is really hard going mm. and I think for parents the challenge of making half term feel different is greater than ever yeah it's looming ahead isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I understand that so kind of uh, what sort of challenges are you facing do you think I miss being part of the year three team Mm -hmm. Although we still have our weekly Teams meeting, it's online now, mm -hmm. um, to talk about the plans, to look at where we're going. There's something lovely at the end of lessons and lunchtime where you review and you chat mm -hmm. and you have the community at school outside your own classroom mm -hmm. that you journey with. Mm -hmm. um, you're part of that community. And I've been at the school a long time. You know, I love it. Um, and often you see the younger children, the siblings, and now they're all distant at the yeah, edge of the yeah. playground on the way home. So I think I miss that. Mm. And that mm. sense that we review the lesson as, as a team of year three. How did it go in your room? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. What are the hiccups? Mm -hmm. How shall we adapt it? Yeah. Um, but the fact we all keep going and we're all still smiling. That's really great. It's great. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you for all you're doing as a teacher. It's fantastic. Now I know that you're also a mum. So Megan and Ruth, can you give us a little update on to, well, kind of where they are and how they are and how it's all going for them? Megan qualified as a nurse back in August. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, it was a tricky time to qualify with COVID yep. and she is at the Royal London. So okay. those who saw the 10 o'clock news, yep. that was where she was. She is a children's nurse mm -hmm. and she got her job on the children's gastro ward and loved it. Wow but has been challenged to move to adult wards, okay. to move to COVID areas that had to be opened up. 
Okay. And that really has pushed mm. her out of her comfort zone. Mm. Um, sure. So we've had lots of chats, mm. lots of acknowledgement that life is very hard. Mm -hmm. We've missed the being able to pop home. There's yeah. nothing like the meeting mm. up face to face. Yeah, of course. Um, but she was encouraged yesterday. She's enjoying a, a week's annual leave, just trying to recharge the batteries. Mm -hmm. And the message came through saying thank you to all the nurses and healthcare assistants who have gone to the adult wards and hoping that this is now going to begin to be a thing not required anymore. Okay. So she might have to go between paediatric wards if needed, mm -hmm. but hopefully more in her com comfort mm -hmm. zone. Yeah. Um, and I think she could be proud that she's done well. You know, Absolutely. we've all had to dig deep. Mm -hmm. And as a mum, it's much harder watching your children have mm -hmm. to dig deep, mm -hmm. I think, than doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's that letting go and letting them have wings to fly. Yeah, yeah. But it's tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that'd be really, that's really good that she's been thanked, but kind of yeah. can feel maybe a bit more for her mental well-being, that yeah. she's back where she's comfortable. Yes. And what about Ruth? Ruth is at university. She was home briefly mm -hmm. at Christmas, uh, which was wonderful to have her home. But of course, as she's a second year, she has a house with friends. Mm -hmm. What's she studying? Biomedical science. Okay. So she's in mm -hmm. Guildford and happily back in her house where you can be <laughs> indoors with other students yeah. all day. Um, and she has loved that. For her, she's part of a church in Guildford mm -hmm. that moved online. So when okay. she was home for the first lockdown, she could keep being part of church and has just continued. And that is a real blessing mm -hmm. for her, although she's desperate to see real people. Yeah, I'm sure. She's had exams that she studied for and has just finished. She said the house was very quiet, although it's good to hear that they were all studying <laughs> as a mum. Um, and then she's <laughs> learned that her course will be blended learning because it is accredited. Mm -hmm. They will have some online and some on uni. So okay. she's really excited that from next week, mm -hmm. she gets to go back on campus oh, that's really <laughs> into great. the outside world mm -hmm. for her studies. That's really good. Well, please do send them our love. I shall. I'm thinking of them. So obviously you want to be able to pray for you and for them, and you've shared lots. Um, are there any some key points that we can pray for you specifically at this time? I think for the government, which then feeds down to the head teachers and the teachers, yeah. as we step forward into what we hope is a new phase where mm -hmm. restrictions ease, that we are in lockdown long enough, we don't need to go back. Mm -hmm. I think that's my heart, that I'd rather spend another week there now than yeah. have to go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think for the children coming into school, <coughs> it will be wobbly again. You've, yeah. you've been safe at home and told mm -hmm. to stay home. Mm -hmm. So I think the prayers that for that whole process, that teachers will be confident the time is right, mm -hmm. that the government would weigh up the parents who need to get to work, yeah. the mental well-being and the mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm and that we would step forward into a new season confidently. That time is right. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, and for head teachers, they've been promised two weeks notice. <laughs> so I'm really hoping this, year, on that one. this time <laughs> that it will be time to, to do it well mm -hmm. um, as we welcome students back, whether mm -hmm. that's everybody or some year groups. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things to think about. Yep. Um, so I think that's my prayer for school. Mm -hmm. Um, for Megan as part of that National Health Service, that there would be times to relax, times to recharge. Mm -hmm. She smiled joyfully when she sent me a picture of the police wellbeing dogs that visited the Royal London a couple of Aww. weeks ago for staff wellbeing. Mm -hmm. And that was really good to see, mm -hmm. but that there would be support mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. all those who had to be on the front line as they mm -hmm. hopefully can step back. Yeah. And for students, I think Ruth is lucky She's blessed, she's settled into uni. Mm -hmm. But I think for, for her and for students, especially those first years who haven't been able to make the friendships mm -hmm. that they would yeah. normally, who have felt isolated, mm -hmm. but still have a passion to learn, that, that, that they would have all the support that they need. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think they, they would be my prayers. Yeah, that's great. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pray for you now. Thank you. I'll try and remember some of that. <laughs> But I'm sure you've been listening. So, you know, do remember Nicola and Megan and Ruth at this time. But let's pray. I want to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, it's been really um, special to have Nicola here with us um, 
today. And Lord, she's really shared very openly and honestly about her present situation being a teacher. Um, and also for Megan and for Ruth at this time. Um, so Lord, you, we've all heard uh, Nicola's real heart for um, the right timing of the return to school for all the teachers and um, the students. Um, and for the whole well-being of the children and the staff and the families. But we do ask for real wisdom for our government at this time. Uh, Lord, they're, they're faced with such huge challenges and huge decisions and um, people have got different opinions across a whole range of what's right and what's wrong. So Lord, we do ask that you will give them wisdom as to the timing of sending uh, the children and all the teachers uh, back into schools. Um, Lord, that that won't be um, kind of sending them back too soon and then have to retract. But Lord, we just ask for the right timing. Pray for the head teachers as they're making uh, really big decisions as well and what's right for their schools as a whole. And Lord, we thank you for uh, head teachers, for teachers, and for uh, teaching assistants and everyone in schools at this time. Lord, will you give them extra strength and resilience that they need? Um, and thank you for the children as well in school and at home. Lord, will you give them um, everything that they need at this time? And Father, we pray for Megan. Thank you for um, being with her in her nursing role. Lord, for the way that she's been able to step out and enter those adult wards. Um, Lord, I pray now that as she hopefully returns to more comfortable uh, places for her amongst the children. Um, Lord, will you continue to give her strength um, enable her to rejuvenate this week as she's resting and Lord we pray for real encouragement for all the um, nursing staff, doctor staff, the whole medical profession and those in caring professions um, that they will be looked after and cared for. We pray that for students as well. Um, like Ruth we thank you that she's enjoying being back at uni with her friends but for those who are started at uni and not able to have that blessing Lord, may they be uh, looked after and provided for in the best way possible. Lord, I thank you that you hear all our prayers um, and be with Nico and the whole family. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So thank you, Nicola. It's been great to spend some time with you hearing about your situation. Now, a few weeks ago, it was four weeks ago, actually, Bob encouraged us to memorise some scripture. And I was wondering how you're getting on with that. Because actually, memorising uh, verses or even parts of the Bible are really important. Because I find, from my personal experience, it might be the same for you as well, Nicola. Sometimes I find that God brings a verse or a word or a passage back into our mind at exactly the right time. So I was kind of wondering how you got on with that, really. Whether you found that you've been able to memorise that scripture, whether it's been coming back to you at different times. So let me just remind you of the verses that uh, Bob shared with us. They, are from one, they were from 1 Peter 1, and they were verses 23 to 25. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That's it, the word of the Lord endures forever. It's never out of date. It's constantly relevant. It's inspirational, cross-cultural, it's intergenerational. And it's applicable for all time. So let's really keep on um, memorising that scripture and um, you know, get those words into our minds and remember that the word of the Lord does endure forever. It's never too late to start learning different verses from the Bible. So let's keep at it. So we have our regular Zoom chat um, starting shortly after Church Online. Hope that you'll be able to make it um, to that. You will have been sent the link in our newsletter um, so you can click on that and join us. Now, when you do receive our newsletters by email, please can I encourage you to um, look through them, but to read them all the way down to the end, because there is some really important information within the newsletters. We've got um, things like details of courses and resources um, that we may not mention in a lot of detail on a, on a Sunday morning. So please do read through the newsletter in full. So for example, 
Um, we've got um, our one-off evening course on, on the 18th of February, which we're calling um, Love Your Neighbour. And it'll be really good for you to be able to join us for that. Um, the link is in the newsletter for you to sign up to say that you can come to that. It's at 8 p.m. And um, I think it'll be really significant for all of us as a church family to be on that course. Uh, in a few weeks, we're gonna be starting our Lent course, which is called Worship in the Wilderness. And um, if you're part of a small group and would like the resources for that, again, uh, look in the newsletter and the link for that will be there. And one of the other things that um, we often include within the newsletter is um, information about funerals and um, how you can access them online. So for last week, um, we remembered and gave thanks for the life of Irene King. And the information for this week um, is regarding Derek Hills's funeral, which is tomorrow on Monday. So please do scroll down there and you'll be able to find out how you can access that service. So we're going to see some um, pictures in a little while and the slides will come up of what's going to be happening throughout the week. Now, within the pictures, um, every Thursday afternoon, the three, three year olds and six year olds, because that's mainly who they are at the moment, um, come together on Zoom for a story session and a craft. So um, Eva and Esme made houses last week because we had the story, The House on the Rock. So have a look out for those pictures and see if you can spot them. They were very different sizes. Uh, the children's and young people's activities will be in the links down below, so do scroll down. School years 9 to 13 have got their Zoom session very shortly. So let's have a look at those pictures now.
We're going to move into a time of prayer now. Now, this week I was uh, reading and listening to the Lectio 365 app, and the topic was um, peace with myself and kind of looking at peacemaking. And I really wanted to share it with you today to kind of aid us in our time of prayer. Now, they started off by reading some verses from John chapter 20, and I'll read them to you in a moment. And it's the time when just after Jesus had risen from the dead and the disciples were hiding themselves away. So I'd recommend that you actually close your eyes for this so that, and then kind of you can enter into all that's being shared. So let's pray. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. So the disciples were confused about what was happening and what was going to happen to them. So they found a place to hide and they locked the doors. In a similar way, we're confused and afraid and often we try to hide and we lock the doors of our lives. So we might hide how we're feeling or we might hide from those feelings. John writes that Jesus came and stood among them. Nobody let Jesus in and the locked doors couldn't keep him out. And as Jesus looked around the room into the fearful faces of his friends, he said these incredible words. Peace be with you. And then he said to them once again, Peace be with you. I'd like you to think about the rooms in your lives, the places where you hide confusion and the things that we're afraid of. Imagine Jesus coming and standing there too. He looks at you and speaks those powerful words of blessing. Peace be with you. And then again he says, Peace be with you. Allow the peace of Jesus to rest upon you in the power of his spirit. Be still in his presence. Respond to him in the quiet. And now I'd like us to think of those who are suffering terribly with fear and trauma today. We think of Captain Sir Tom Moore's family, who are grieving for him as he's passed away this week. And for those close to us that we know who have lost loved ones. We think of our NHS workers on the front line. We've been focusing on them a lot this morning. And we think about the nation of Portugal, experiencing unprecedented wave of COVID, having over, it's overwhelming their health system. We ask you, Jesus, Prince of Peace, to come and stand beside them. Be with them. And we speak blessing over them in Jesus' name. Peace 
be with you. Thank you, dear Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace and that you hear all of our prayers. Amen. So it's my pleasure to give a very warm welcome to Pastor Kephas Amos, who is going to share the message with us very shortly. Thank you so much for being able to join us today. We look forward to hearing all that God has to share with us through you. And also I'd like to give a really good, uh, very warm welcome to Rit, who is Pastor Kephas' wife. And um, she's going to read the Bible passage to us now. Thank you, Rit. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ has received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in our abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil de desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them in sh is short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome in the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for that reading. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this opportunity to hear from you. We open our hearts to you and ask that in the power of your spirit, you will enlighten the darkness of our hearts and reveal Jesus to us. We ask this in your name. Amen. These epistles, the first and second Peter, were written by Apostle Peter to churches that were scattered and going through quite a difficult time because of their faith. The churches were facing persecution and many Christians were hunted and killed in horrific ways, for some instances, just to entertain people. Peter, an old man by now, and who would eventually be martyred by Nero, chose to write a letter that was intended to take the focus of the readers away from the pain, rejection, and suffering they were experiencing to the living hope that is laid up for them in heaven, as we read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. He admonished them to live holy lives, as though to say the greater the darkness, the more their light would shine. The response of Christians, according to Peter, was not to be one of defeat, self-pity, and moving about dejected as though they were rejected. Rather, they were to live holy lives in a godless world, which was to be the demonstration of the victory they have found in Christ Jesus. Today, Christians in different parts of the world suffer similar challenges as did the early churches that Peter wrote to. Many in different parts of the world suffer persecution because of their faith, including Nigeria, my country. We are a country that is equally a difficult to be a Christian because of the persecution in various forms. 
In the UK, however, what we are suffering is the ravaging influence of coronavirus, which has affected us all in different ways. Therefore, the encouragement of Peter in the verses we have read are very relevant for us today. In 1 Peter, the encouragement addressed external challenges that the Christian churches faced. But in 2 Peter, the apostle deals with the inward transformation that ought to take place in believers so that they can withstand the challenges that come from within the body of Christ, which is the problem of false teachers as addressed in chapter 2. Our passage today points us to the inward transformation that ought to happen in believers who will overcome the darkness or storm that the world casts on them and what the right response to such storms should be. First, the reassurance that we have been equipped to overcome and escape the corrupting influence of the world and its evil desires is what Peter begins to address. And as far as Peter is concerned, yes, there is an evil, there's a power that the world has over us that is directed us at believers. But Peter then spoke and he encourages us. In this way he says, God's divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this, Peter presents a resource that heaven has made available for the Christian to thrive in these difficult times. We are not to be victims, but we are to be victors because of the power of God. He says it is God's divine power that has been made available. And when I speak of this, I think of the power of God at creation that he spoke and everything he said came into being. I think of the power of God that has been demonstrated through scripture, especially in humbling Egypt. That is the power that is available for you and I as we walk through this world as we fight the enemy. And this power has provided for us everything that we need for life and godliness. Therefore, it means we can thrive in life and live happy and victorious lives because for us who have placed our faith in Christ, there is a divine power that is at work in us, giving us the grace to laugh in the face of adversity because we can say like the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we are to live godly lives as long as we have life in this mortal body because we have been given all that we need to do so. How? Through God's divine power. Secondly, Apostle Peter says, we have also been called to share in God's divine nature. And this nature is one that came to us when we accepted Christ. The Apostle Paul again captures this truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, when he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So we have a new life in us. We may still possess our same mortal bodies. People on your streets will recognize you by the same body, but heaven sees you as different. Heaven sees a new creation, a new creature walking. And this creature that heaven sees because of our new birth in Christ is a victorious and powerful creature. Paul explains the implication of sharing or participating in this divine nature in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 7, where he says, God, 
who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So you see the reality of this new divine nature that we are possessors of causes us to enjoy a life of togetherness with Christ. So we are not alone. It does not matter what we are going through. Scripture is assuring us because we have a new nature in Christ, we are not alone. We are together with Christ. This means we should live with the joy of knowing that through, though we go through trying times, our divine reality is different. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So, what we are seeing in the world and are going through is not our reality. Rather, our reality is that though on earth, though going through trials and tribulations, though suffering through the ravages of coronavirus, our real spiritual seat and place is in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, beyond the reaching influences of sickness. And any trouble. For this reason, Peter says, we are to make every effort to grow. Since we have been given the divine power of God, since we are people who are established in our faith, and we have this, we are participants in the divine nature of God, let us then make every effort to grow by adding to our faith. Now, the fact that we are called to make every effort points to this truth that we are being opposed and pushed back by the sinfulness in the world. Remember, he earlier on said there is the evil nature. There is great evil in the world that opposes believers. And for this reason, we are to therefore make every effort to keep pushing back, to stand our ground, to stand in our faith. Nevertheless, the effort we make in this case is not to see our growth as a result, as a reward for our effort. Rather, Peter points us to what has been provided for us. Our growth stems from what has been provided for us, which is the fact that we have a precious faith and God's divine power is at our disposal to grow and we are participants in the divine nature. The Apostle Paul, echoing this, says in Philippians chapter uh, 1, chapter 2, I beg your pardon, verses 12b and 13. He says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, many people who read this will think it means that uh, it is up to us to ensure we are saved and to walk it out. But so that we do not live with that understanding, so that we do not boast that our salvation is our own effort, he goes on to say, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, this, this tells us that even when we are able to stand in our faith, even when we are able to resist temptation, it is not because we are extraordinary. It is because there is this power of God that is at work in us. It is God himself who is working in us. As though to say, God is cooperating with you and I to live victorious Christian lives. Peter therefore says, for this reason, we are to grow by adding to our faith the following virtues that we read. Goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, mutual affection, and love. You will notice that these virtues are almost the same as the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, which are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
The Spirit of God is calling us, therefore, to grow in these virtues that go against the gloom and pain and loss and suffering that is in the world today. Yes, we may be in pain because of different ailments or loss of the means of livelihood as a result of the coronavirus. But we have a life at work in us which is divine, a life which cannot be affected by the virus, a life which glows brighter and brighter because it is the life of Christ in us flowing in and through us. The world may not see it, but we know it is there and its power is made manifest in us every day. The story is told of a man, a gentleman, that normally would walk past a certain house on his way to do some shopping for groceries. And each day he passed by this house, he would hear some wonderful singing coming from there. And periodically, the songs will go louder than normal. And yet they would be so melodious and so deep in worship. Such that you can't help but understand that the singer must be one who loves the Lord and worships God deeply. On this day, as he was passing that house, he saw a young girl coming out and they met at the pharmacy. So he commended the girl. He complimented her and said, oh, um, whoever is singing in your house must be a very godly person. Because I hear this deep worship, these songs of praise to God that go on. And sometimes they, they become more beautiful in intensity. Could that be your mother? The young girl said, yes, that's my mother. But the thing is, she has cancer. And she's always in agonizing pain. And yet, in her pains, rather than groan and moan, she sings praises to God. And the more intense her pain, the louder her praise and the deeper her worship. When I read that part, it struck me. It struck me that this woman must have been a woman who had come to, a, to see the grace of God in a different light. She trusted God's grace to sustain her. She held on to her faith, which was greater than her pains and sickness. She held on to her relationship with God, which exceeded her condition, such that the more intense her pain, the deeper she was able to draw from deep within her and to sing of the praise of God. Beloved, in these difficult times, we are to respond in a similar manner. As the world gets darker, as things get tougher, our praise and our worship of God should get louder and should come from the deeper wells of our walk with God. In verse 8 of our passage, Peter tells us of the reward that will come to us if we continue to grow in the above virtues. He says we will not be barren or unproductive. Neither will we be unfaith, unfruitful in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So while the world is working hard to produce the vaccine that destroys or stops the coronavirus so that life can return to normal, Peter shows us in verses 2 and 8 that the knowledge of Christ is the vaccine that assures us of a continuously productive growth or life till we enter into eternal rest with Christ. He also tells us that whoever does not grow in the knowledge of Christ is short-sighted, spiritually blind, because that person has forgotten that he or she has been saved and cleansed from past sins. Such a person has forgotten the cost of his salvation. He has forgotten that he or she was an object of God's wrath and destined to eternal condemnation but has been reconciled to God through the sacrifice of Jesus. A person who is not growing finds it difficult to resist sin, but keeps falling again and again in the sins that he or she had renounced. Such a person, like Paul says, would be one who is tossed to and fro by false teaching and every deceit that the enemy brings. And such a person will always find it impossible to stand. Peter goes on to encourage us in verses 10 and 11 that we are to ensure that we do not stumble or fall as a result of the hard times we are in. 
Instead, we are to confirm our election by remaining rooted in the grace of God, by standing firm in our faith and never giving in, no giving up. We should not give in to the pressures of the world to compromise, neither should we give up and think God has abandoned us. We should stand firm, and in our stand would be the way of confirming we have truly been saved. So these times of coronavirus and its impact on us are times for us to be more fervent in the study of God's word. More and more, since the word of God is our truest and surest source of strength. Let us be more fervent in prayer as we look forward to the rich welcome that awaits us. Because whoever is able to stand to the end at this time, scripture says, that person will receive a rich welcome. Don't you think it will be worth it when we have endured tribulations, when we have passed through difficulties and Jesus receives us to his bosom and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. How do you think Lazarus felt in the parable that Jesus gave when even though he lacked on earth, he suffered all manner of humiliating experiences. He suffered so much that dogs were licking his wound. He entered into rest and Jesus said, come and enter into the rest that, he has, that has been prepared for you. Oh, that would be a wonderful comfort from all the troubles we have gone through. And this is what worth waiting for. Let us therefore live with an expectation of the welcome that is waiting for us. Jesus himself said, in this world, we will have tribulations, but we are to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. So beloved, know that we are of operating from the place of victory. In conclusion, I'd like to ask you, are you adding to your faith? Are you improving on what God has already finished in you? Are you furnishing your faith with goodness and knowledge and all these virtues that we read? Are you growing in your relationship with God such that that growth can help you stand the trials and the difficulties of these days we are in. Hold on to Jesus and you will end up rejoicing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and we ask, O oh Father, that in mercy you will make this true to our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Jack, and the team for leading our uh, sung worship today. Um, God truly is a God of grace. And thank you so much to KFAS for sharing so powerfully with us this morning. I'm going to finish um, the service time together now as we began. I'm going to use the Sabbath blessing, but I'm going to add a few extra words and um, change it a little bit. But let's say the blessing. May this day bring Sabbath rest to your heart and your home. May God's image in you be restored and your imagination in God be restoried. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May you know grace to embrace your finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. And may God's word feed you and his spirit lead you through all the words, songs, prayers, and the message that Kepha shared with us. May we take it into the day, into the week, and into the life to come. Amen. Take care and God bless you all. <laughs>